I'm thrilled to have Abby Johnson join me today. She is founder and CEO of And Then There Were None, an author of Unplanned, which was turned into a groundbreaking film about Abby's life story. Abby, your life story is changing hearts and minds. When Unplanned was released in theaters, it, it's really sparked a national conversation about abortion and lives are being saved. What What's your life been like since the release of Unplanned? <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. You know, it, um, it's been a whirlwind, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, you just, I've never done this before. I've, I've written books. I've done, you know, speaking tours, but... Um, to actually have a film come out about your life, that was new territory for me and my family. And, uh, you know, we, we've been learning the process as we've been going along. And I tell you, though, just, you know, waking up and seeing the emails and messages pouring in from people saying, you know, I, I walked into your film pro-choice, I walked out pro-life, or people mm. saying, youth ministers taking their youth groups and 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 youth having these profound conversions on the issue of life and and even women and men who had had abortions themselves who've never gone through healing you know emailing and saying I finally feel like I I'm at a place where I need to find healing and we're able to get to, to get them connected. And it's just been really beautiful and just a profound thing to witness God's mercy um, in such an incredible way. Well, Abby, you've had to become very personal. What made you decide to be so open and vulnerable in sharing your story publicly? You know, it took it took some time and prayer, honestly, to make that decision because I, when I was originally approached by the directors, um, I, my mis- my initial thinking was, I just don't know if that's something I want to do. I felt like I'd al- already been just incredibly vulnerable in my book and in my talk and what I have shared publicly, and I realized that opening myself up. For people to see my story on a screen, to visually see that was going to be even another layer of vulnerability. And I just wasn't sure that that was something that I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, I prayed about it and the, the directors actually came down to Austin where we live and met with my husband and I and met with my parents and some other key people who were part of my story. And, you know, after having conversations with them and praying with them and um, just really discussing what my expectations would be, I felt confident that this was the route that God wanted me to take. And I, I felt that way because I just, I kept recalling all of the speak events I've done across the country and all of the women who have walked up to me and they've said, I had an abortion 30 years ago. I had an abortion 40 years ago. I had an illegal abortion 55 years ago, and I've never told anyone until right now. And I thought, you know, God has has already used my story, it's really his story, in such a powerful way. And I thought this could be just another outlet to get people into healing resources and to hopefully change the conversation surrounding abortion. Absolutely. I know, Abby, when I went to the movie, I was riveted, but I was also compelled by your redemptive story. And it's bringing hope like women just like you across America and beyond. I know we are so excited to have you in Nebraska on August 27th for the Nebraska Family Alliance Partnership Dinner, really to celebrate the cause of life. What is at the heart of your message as you travel across the country, boldly sharing your story and telling the truth about abortion? What drives you and what will you be sharing that night? Well, uh, well, first I want to apologize for all of the life you can hear in the background at my home. 
my eight children. Uh, there's never, I try to find quiet places in my house to do interviews. And I've just learned that it doesn't exist. The quiet places. You know exist. what? We're going to celebrate um, family with you, Abby. I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is real life, you know, <laughs> in real life. So, um, you know, honestly, I travel around and I talk to people who, you know, they, they say, you know, I've, well, I've always been pro-life. I've, I've always been comfortable checking a box that says I'm pro-life, right? Or I vote for a pro-life candidate. And those things are important. But I want to really challenge people to go the next step and to get uncomfortable and to really find their place, find that place where they can be active in this movement, whether it's out in front of abortion facilities, uh, whether it is inside of pregnancy resource centers, whether it's lobbying at your state capitol, whatever it may be, to really push yourself past what feels comfortable because these unborn children and their mothers, they deserve that. And and so I hope that by hearing my story and by hearing what's really taking place, what these mothers and their innocent children are really going through inside of these clinics, I hope that that does spur people to action and and really helps to motivate them. I love advancing the culture of life. And I like to look at it. If each one of us does our part, we really shift a nation in how we view the life issue. Abby, you have launched And Then There Was None. Tell us about that ministry. Sure. So um, I founded the organization in mid-2012, and the goal was, to simply get abortion clinic workers, ancillary staff, nurses, physicians, to get them out of the abortion industry and to get them into um, a path of healing and really ultimately get them into a relationship with Jesus Christ because we know that only true healing comes through him. And, And so, you know, we didn't know how successful we would be in the beginning. I mean, you know, it's sort of a hard sell to yes. convince abortion clinic workers yes. to, to trust us in the pro-life movement. But um, in the past few years, we have helped over 530 abortion clinic workers um, come to experience the beauty of Christ and come into a relationship with Him and leave their jobs and and to have that conversion experience. And uh, it's just been really amazing to sort of link arms with God on this project and to to seek out the one, right? To seek out the one who is lost, who is hurting, who desperately needs him. And, um, you know, we just, it's been more successful than we could have ever imagined. And that's just what God does, right? That's just how he works. We expect little and he gives us an abundance and, um, that's that's really what we've experienced with it and we're done. That is so powerful. And we are honored to have you come on August 27th and for us to also provide a, an offering to end there and there was none. The pro-life movement is growing. It's more about just the issue of abortion, but it's massive. It's, it's helping children. I love what pregnancy resource centers are doing too across the nation. Abby, how can we be praying for you and your wonderful active family and ministry? How can we be supporting you in prayer? Well, you know, um, we are uh, we have eight children, my husband and I, and um, you know, I always tell people that I'm out on the front line uh, doing this work, but uh, there is truly a quiet champion behind me and or beside me, and that is uh, my husband, Doug, and he stays at home with our children um, while I'm out on the road, and uh, so I always ask for prayers for him. (laughs) Um, Anybody that's at home with (laughs) eight children definitely needs some (laughs) prayers. They are busy. They um, are busy. (laughs) Yes, he's very busy, and I'm going to be traveling uh, this this fall with our, our newest addition, Fulton, um, and so he's, he's about six weeks old right now. So, um, you know, just prayers for, for us as, as we travel, 
uh, Fulton and I travel together, prayers um, for Doug at home with the rest of our children. And, you know, I would say for our ministry, definitely um, just prayers for these workers um, who are making that that really courageous transition, that courageous step to leave, and, and prayers that um, they would find their voice and that they would use their voice to begin speaking out about um, the tragedy of abortion um, and that they don't feel that shame anymore of, of working in the industry, but truly that they feel that redemptive power of God. We are going to be supporting you in prayer. And I love your personal story, how out of your own heartbreak and tragedy, you are now using it to highlight truth about abortion, but taking it even a step further and assisting others wanting to come out of the abortion industry. We are so thrilled for you and your family. And Doug, we thank God we see you both as champions and precious Fulton, who will be traveling with you. God bless you, Abby. Thank you for your time. And we can't wait to see you in Omaha on August 27th. And we encourage our listeners to come here, Abby, on the 27th at the Embassy Suites in La Vista. Purchase your tickets today at NebraskaFamilyAlliance.org as we celebrate life together. God bless you, Abby. Thank you so much. I look forward to it.